Okay, welcome to uh, the fifth video in this uh, series of midterm review videos. And I'm going to do the second uh, problem, E1 practice problem, uh, the second one, number two. I'm going to do that right now, I think. And uh, so that's, we just finished this first one here, and now we're going to do this one here. Same, same kind of problems. A little bit different scenario, it looks like. Uh, okay, so uh, you're, this time you're employed as a manager of a used car dealership, and uh, you have the following seven situations in which you need to use your expertise in statistics. For each of the seven scenarios, choose the most appropriate table, chart, diagram, graph, plot, or summary measure. Just choose a letter, just answer a letter or a number. Okay, so um, you have the, you have... Uh, you have the selling prices of 50 used cars that were sold, 50 cars that were sold today, and you'd like a method of looking at the shape of the distribution without losing much detail of the actual selling prices. Okay, so um, uh, this is one numerical. You have selling prices, and you got a sample of 50. And uh, so, what are the different ways that we can uh, look at a sample of 50? Uh, we want to be able to look at the data to uh, to see its shape, but we don't. But we want to retain as much information as possible. Uh, so uh, B is no, that's a range. That's not what we're interested in. D is uh, histogram. Um, that's you, you, you kind of lose a lot of information. It's just these bars. E is a polygon. Uh, same thing. It's just like some points on a graph. Uh, F cumulative percentage. That that um, again. That's a, a graph. Uh, box and whisker. Okay, stem and leaf. Um, M is a normal probability. I think stem and leaf is the answer because with the stem and leaf, you recall, uh, you actually can figure out what the actual uh, data values are because uh, you you uh, split the data data up in a way where you can actually see the curve. It's kind of a sideways bell-shaped curve if it is bell-shaped, and then uh, the bars of this curve the the area underneath the curve are, is made in the diagram using the digits of the actual values. So you can actually uh, see if a particular value uh, exists in the set. So uh, I think um, stem and leaf is the answer. Okay, number two. You want a summary measure that lets you know the lack of symmetry in looking at the selling uh, card, uh, price of cards in a given day. It's a summary measure. You're only looking for one number and lack of symmetry, uh, symmet the symmetry of a bell-shaped curve is, uh, a measure of the symmetry is the skewness, okay? You recall uh, for, for it to be bell-shaped, for it to be normal, if you look at the skewness, you look at the kurtosis, uh, the kurtosis doesn't, uh, tells you how peaked it is uh, or not, or flat, and skewness is whether it skews to the left or right. So uh, skewness is, is the answer, it's a single, single number. Uh, skewness here is a single measure. All right, what's next? Every day the company buys used cars from individuals and the number of cars bought is recorded along with the total count of how many cars need major repairs uh, before uh, resale. Okay, so this looks like that's so you're taking data over time. Uh, it's you're looking at uh, it's a single category where uh, these cars come in. A car either needs major repairs or does not need major repairs, uh, and you're uh, you're uh, you're keeping a running total of this, uh, probably for quality control reasons. Uh, if all of a sudden the major repair repairs number goes up, uh, you, you're going to have to make some adjustments. You're going to want to deal with that. Or if uh, a particular day. A whole bunch came in that that didn't need any repairs. Uh, you know that's something that, that would be an outlier. Uh, you would want to uh, uh, see that and perhaps uh, try to figure out what's going on. So uh, that's a P chart. This one here. So it's A. Okay, number four. Uh, you wish to allocate monthly bonuses to the top ten percent of your sales personnel. This is a badly worded question. Uh, you have um, the monthly sales figures for each of the salespeople. What would you use to help identify quickly what 
which sales totals value would put a certain uh, sales person in the bonus uh, situation. Uh, now, um, this this is not something that you can do a priori because you're you know you can't come up with a number before the month uh, what this number is because uh, you're talking about 10% of the sales personnel, and uh, you know it's possible that that none of them reach that value uh, or or they all reach the value okay uh, who knows uh, so uh, so to get 10% to know that's only 10% you need to have the you you need to be looking at the data that's already there uh, so uh, the, the sales value uh, okay so um, um, I think a Pareto is best uh, something that lists basically lists all of the salespeople and their sales for that month and and you can order them okay so a, a, a Pareto is a nice way to put that in a diagram if there's only a you know, dozen or two salespeople I guess if there's hundreds of salespeople uh, you may just want to use an array uh, just a list of, of all the salespeople and you can sort that list um, but anyway what's what's nice about a Pareto is that the chart shows the order of the top producers from left to right and you know you just count off the first 10 and that's the first 10 percent whatever that number is and if you have 80 salespeople you count off the first eight and that's those are the folks that get the bonus all right next you have a sample of 100 of the selling prices of 1500 used cars sold in the last quarter so we have uh, 1,500 used cars total, and we have a sample of 100. Uh, so, and we wish to uh, know what the total amount of sales of the 1,500 are based on uh, on our sample of 100. Okay, so uh, this is actually uh, quite simple. First of all, you want to assume that it's normal, and uh, you can confirm that by looking at uh, kurtosis and so on, but. Um, uh, skewness and, and kurtosis, but uh, assuming it's normal, then uh, uh, even if it's uh, you, you can take the mean. In fact, it doesn't even need to be normal. The mean, the, yes, it does. Uh, the mean uh, is the average. So uh, the mean is, and assuming it's a representative sample, uh, the mean is the average selling price. So the mean applied to this number should be the same as the mean applied to this number. So all we need to do to get the answer is to take the mean and multiply it by 1,500, and that would be the uh, estimated uh, sales uh, uh, for the whole population. Times, times mean sales value times population. Right. Okay, uh, let's see, number, number six. You suspect that the data on selling prices of used cars has some extreme outliers on the high side because of the sales of a few luxury cars. You want to describe the variability in the data by using a summary measure, but you're worried about the impact of outliers. Uh, well, uh, if, you're, if you're looking at um, uh, variability and uh, you just want to measure a single number, then uh, we can look at uh, 5 is a good one if the data is normal, which is a standard deviation, and uh, 9 is a good one if uh, the data uh, isn't normal. And in this case, uh, you're worried about outliers. Uh, 9 is interquartile range. So, so in this case, you're 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 worried about outliers, which suggests it's not normal. So, uh, uh, you would not use the standard deviation; you would use the interquartile range. So, the answer is nine. Number seven. Every week, the manager records uh, the number of sales that are were transacted that week, along with the number of transactions that had complaints. Okay, so this is a quality thing. Uh, you're taking data over time. Uh, you. You're looking at transactions, uh, and um, you have uh, uh, it's just categorical because a transaction either is, has a complaint associated with it or it does not. So it's it's uh, transactions with complaints 
complaints and transactions without complaints. Uh, and so uh, that's, uh, uh, oh, those are the two categories. And then for each of those categories, you're looking at the, the, the number of sales. So that's, uh, it's two, it's two, um, uh, here's the problem, it should be C. It's uh, categorical data, and um, uh, it's it's uh, it's the uh, very it's a it's very a variable number of data points per day. It's the number of sales, but each data point is either a transaction with with a complaint or a, transa or a transaction without a complaint. So it's a uh, it's a proportional chart, and uh, is so A is. A is the answer, which is a P chart. Okay, so that concludes uh, the practice uh, practice answers, and uh, so that concludes this video. And uh, the last video next is going to uh, just be a covering uh, some of the problems in this assignment, which in our uh, problem set three, which I think uh, you may want to uh, refresh your uh, go back and look at again. Uh, thanks for watching.